Okay, hi everyone, this is Miss Withers here talking. Um, you're going to have to bear with me because this is the first time I've done this. Um, so what we're essentially going to do is I want to talk you through the PowerPoint um, like I would in a lesson anyway and get you to stop and pause the video at different times so you can complete the tasks I've put on the slides. Um, that way I think it makes it a little bit easier um, for you guys to understand what's actually going on on the slides and just to get a little bit of explanation from a teacher as well um, makes it a little bit easier. So what we're looking at in this um, PowerPoint is monsoons and how they affect India. Now, some of you may have done this a little bit in lesson already, but there's no harm in recapping anyway. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking at and how they affect India and the people in India as well. So if you've been completing your work in your books or on sheets at home or anything like that, and you've been keeping them in a folder, that's great. But what I want you to do where possible is if you could complete your work on Word documents or PowerPoints um, and save them to your computer or on a memory stick or something. And then when you've done the work, submit it through Teams. So we're putting all the work on Microsoft Teams. Um, and you should have got an email from me to say how you use Teams and how you can submit things on Teams. Um, so that's all on there as well. But if you're doing your work, please do it on a Word document or PowerPoint, submit it through Teams or, or ePraise. Um, and if you can't do it through those, please email it to me. So um, regardless of who your geography teacher is, just email all your work to me because I'll be in charge of um, Year 7 and 8 geography um, for the remainder of the schools being closed. Um, so please do that first. Um, also, if you can do it through Teams and ePraise, it makes it a lot easier for the teachers to track who's who's done the work. So if you do it through those two, it makes it a lot easier for me to tick your name off the list of people who have done this one. OK, I know it's getting used to a whole new way of working, guys, and I, I appreciate all, all the work you're doing. So well done. Um, and I appreciate you guys having to bear with us while we're um, figuring out what we're actually doing. So thank you very much. Anyway, on to the lesson. So if you've got a Word document open or a PowerPoint open, you can be doing all the work onto that and then send it to me when you're finished. Um, if you really don't have any other option, you can do it on paper or in your books, but please make sure that's kept care, uh, kept safe um, and you keep those things um, in, a, in a safe place altogether so that you've got them um, for when school's open again. But it is just a lot easier to keep track of things and for teachers to see you've done the work if you submit it that way through a Word document or PowerPoint. OK, so. Let's have a look. So what I want you to do first before we actually get into the lesson is pause the video in a second once I've explained um, what you're doing for your task one. Um, I want you to find the definitions for those words underneath there and write them down on your Word document or your PowerPoint or if you haven't got those in um, in your books or, or on a piece of paper. As I said, if you can do it on a Word document and PowerPoint, that'll make it so much easier. Um, so the words we've got are precipitation, low pressure, high pressure, insulation and circulation. OK, there are five key geographical words I want you to find a definition for. Um, so pause the video now and find those definitions for me. OK, so you probably just press play again. You should have pressed play again um, after pausing it and completing that first task. So moving on to the next bit after you finish that first one. Don't move on if you haven't finished that first task yet. So next one, we've got what is a monsoon? and How does it form? OK, so you might have heard of a monsoon before. You might know what it is. It's a, um, a season really in India um, and Southeast Asia, but it hits India quite um quite the most. Um, so a monsoon is a period of a few months um, of very, very heavy rainfall. OK. And it, it happens every year in India and, and the areas around India. So every single year they get a few months of really heavy rainfall. And so that's what we're looking at. Um, we're going to have a look at how they form. OK, so we've got a diagram here on this side of the PowerPoint and um, which will help with the explanation in the in the text next to it. So an important thing to remember when we're talking about the formation of monsoons is that land heats up a lot quicker than the ocean. OK, because land is solid, the ocean is more fluid. It takes a lot longer to heat up a massive body of water than it does a, a massive body of land. OK, so in summer months, when you've got stronger sun energy, so solar radiation, sun energy hitting land, you get land heating up a lot, lot quicker than it would um, over the ocean. 
OK, so a monsoon is formed by a change in the direction of winds um, and it brings about change in precipitation patterns. Now, you should know what that word means from your first task from finding the definition. If you knew it already, then that's brilliant. Um, but precipitation is essentially anything that falls from a cloud. So we're talking about rain, snow, hail, sleet, um, anything that falls from a cloud at all. So monsoons are formed by a change in direction of wind. So normally um, there's a certain wind pattern associated with India. During the monsoon season, those winds change and that's what causes all those clouds to form that's holding all that rain and then it brings around the heavy rain. OK, so in the summer months, when the sun energy gets much stronger, surfaces heat much quicker. When the wind changes and the cold air gets pushed in over land, uh, much more rain starts to form. OK, so normally the wind is flowing from land over to the sea. When those winds change, you've got that wind flowing from the ocean over to the land. OK, like this um, circulation pattern here we've got on the on the right hand side of the PowerPoint. So when you've got that wind changing direction and bringing that cooler air from the ocean in over the land, what that colder air does, because it's formed over the ocean, as we said, ocean doesn't heat up as quickly. The cold air gets pushed in over the land where the land is heated. The air here is a lot hotter. So when cold air meets that hot air, what happens is clouds form because a lot of condensation happens. So the hot air starts to cool down when it mixes with the colder air and lots of condensation happens and we get lots of clouds forming. OK, so this is due to cold air from over the sea meeting the warm air over the land and condensing to form clouds. OK, so when those winds change, essentially what you've got, the cold air moving in over the land, meeting the warm air, lots of clouds forming, lots of rainfall. OK, that's essentially how a monsoon forms. I've put a clip down here from the Met Office, uh, the Meteorological Office, um, to be able to understand um, monsoons a little bit easier. They are a hard concept to get your head around. It's quite difficult to understand. So if you don't understand it at the moment and it seems a bit jumbled up in your head, don't worry about it too much. Um, OK, you will understand it um, as time goes on. But just for now, if you want to click on that link, I'll also link it below this video because you might not be able to click on it through the video. I'll link it down below as well so you can have a look at that one first. Um, it's got some good images in there and it might help you to understand it a little bit better. OK, um, so if you want to watch that, you can pause that now and open it in a new tab or you can watch it afterwards. It's completely up to you. Right, so next thing I want you to do uh, again, you're going to be pausing this video after I've spoken on this bit. So we've got a diagram to show the formation of a monsoon. Now, I've left that picture there. Um, so what I want you to do is draw a diagram to show um, the formation of a monsoon. Obviously, if you're doing it on a PowerPoint or a Word, you can't draw it. But if you want to find a diagram similar to this on like Google Images, um, then you can do. Or if you want to try and recreate that using the shapes on um, Word, that's fine with me too. Just try and get some kind of copy of that diagram down on your Word document or your PowerPoint, um, or you can even screen capture this and paste it into your document, which, whichever works for you, just as long as you've got a diagram to be able to explain it. Then underneath your diagram, what I want you to do is write out the following steps here in these blue boxes in the correct order to explain the formation of a monsoon. OK, so these are all steps in the formation of a monsoon, but they're all jumbled up. So you need to put them in order. So you need to write them out or type them out in the right order to be able to explain how a monsoon forms. OK, I hope that's clear enough with everyone. So you're just getting a diagram and putting those steps in order for me. Um, so please pause the video now and start doing that one for me on your Word document, your PowerPoint or your books. OK, I've put some sentence starters down here for those of you who are maybe not feeling too confident about answering that. Um, but these will help you to structure that answer a little bit more. So the area of India that receives the most rainfall during monsoon, monsoon season is this area receives. So I want you to then fill in using that data into that sentence data. So say, for instance, the area of India that receives most rainfall during monsoon season is the southern tip near Kochi. This area receives 105 percent to 110 percent more rainfall during monsoon season than it would normally. OK, something like that. And then just do the same for the least rainfall areas as well. So these brown shaded areas. OK, so pause the video again here and um, start that one for me. OK, so you must have pressed play again by now. Um, so what are the impacts of monsoons on people? So we've got um, 
these monsoons happening every single year in India. Okay, and you'd think that people um, could be quite prepared for them because they know they're coming each year. But in India, maybe there's some areas that don't have a lot of money to be able to um, build things that would be resistant to that kind of um, heavy rainfall or to be able to rebuild things from the previous year to be able to cope with them the next year and with things like climate change those monsoon seasons could be getting worse okay so they could be getting more rainfall each year as our climate changes around the world um, and things like that so monsoons happen every single year in India people in India do welcome it so there is um, it, there is a good aspect to it because it brings water to um, crops for farmers and um, it waters deserts and really dry regions of India and it is a relief as it brings some cooler temperatures to some areas so in India in the summer it can get really really hot into the mid 40s um, maybe even 50 degrees Celsius kind of um, region but when you've got a lot of rainfall it does bring cooler temperatures to, so to those people it actually is a bit of a relief when that comes along so there are good aspects to monsoons but also there are a lot of negatives so they can be very violent in how um, the rain falls they can bring around um, severe flash flooding lots of widespread um, really dangerous floods and that can lead to things like mudslides and um, damage to crops on farms and um, people being um, forced out of their homes and damage to things like roads and trains and, and transport as well. So there is a lot of bad sides to it as well. Um, I've put two pictures in here to help you have a, a visualise of it. So this is um, a town or a city that's been flooded during a monsoon season. Um, this guy on a bike, obviously, it's up to the top of his wheels, so it'd be very difficult to get around. And then imagine that going into people's houses and things like that as well. And then we've got the picture of um, a monsoon cloud and what that looks like and just the scale of how big these storms are and how big the rain clouds are as well. So that's how it affects people um, and the impacts that can have on people. So there are some positives, there are some negatives, but um, it's just thinking about kind of which one outweighs the other. So another thing I want you to do, <laughs> um, pause the video in a second when I'm finished explaining, um, but you need to do some research for me. So research the 2015 monsoon season in India. Now, obviously, we know that they get them every year, but the 2015 one was a particularly bad year and it had some really huge impacts on people. So um, I've put some points in there that you can be researching. So things like how long it lasted, how many people died, the worst affected areas in India, negative impacts on people. So things like did people lose their homes? Did they lose their jobs do people lose family members um did farmers lose crops things like that positive impacts if you can find any there might not be a lot of positive impacts talked about if you're researching on the internet because they tend to just um report on the bad things but if you can find any positives please do include them as well and then include pictures as well um all on your word documents or powerpoints so you just copy in and paste in pictures over from google images but please try as much as you can to write things in your own words instead of just copying and pasting information from the internet because it is very easy to spot that when people are doing it okay so um pause the video here and start doing a little bit of research as i said just include those points and just a little bit on each one is all you need to include OK, so you must press. Play. OK, the narration got to, uh, cut off there, guys, on the last slide. Um, but all I was going to do was introduce this one anyway. So this is your last task of this lesson. Task four. Um, so in your opinion, is the monsoon season good or bad for the people of India? Just kind of summing up everything we've done in this lesson um, and giving me your opinion on whether you think it's good or bad. So think about the formation, think about where it affects, think about the effects on people and in your head, you need to decide whether you think it's good or bad. It's completely opinion based. There is no right or wrong. Um, but all I want you to do is answer that question for me. For those of you who are confident with answering a question like that, um, who know how to structure that kind of answer, that's fine. You can start. Um, for anyone else, there is some sentence starters below um, to help you structure. So um, I've got I think the monsoon season is bad for people of India because um, another bad thing about the monsoon is although the monsoon can be good in some ways as and then this is good because OK, just to help you structure that a little bit better. Um, so thinking about the good things, thinking about the bad things and then maybe finish it off with a conclusion of overall. Um, I think the monsoon is good or bad because OK, um, just making sure you're explaining your points and backing up what you're saying as well. 
Okay, so once you've finished that one, guys, that'll be your um, geography work for this week done. Um, that is uh, all you have to do for this week. I will be uploading another lesson next week. Um, so that will be more work for you to do after that. Um, we're going to keep doing them in this kind of style because I think it's good that you guys get the explanation from me as well um, over the PowerPoint. Um, can you please save your Word documents and your PowerPoints that you've done the work on and um, send them to me or submit them sorry to me through pre uh, through teams and ePraise or if you really are struggling with that and you can't do it you just email them to me okay but please do teams and ePraise first because I lose track of how many emails I'll be receiving if I'm controlling the work for over 500 year sevens and eights okay so that can be quite difficult but um if they're submitted through teams I can see who submitted them and um, who's done the work and then I can write down who's done it and give you a, a tick for doing that so um teachers are keeping track of who's doing work um so if you do through through teams it's a lot easier for us to track that as well um so once you've done that guys you're free to go from geography for a week and there'll be more up next week um as i've said in the email um all communication for year seven and eight geography will now come through me miss withers um so make sure you're emailing me if there's any issues and um your work will be set by me on teams and it will be put on ePraise as well so it will be a link to two teams on ePraise but it'll just be um, on ePraise it'll explain what you have to do um and things like that as well and just the deadline for it as well um we'll normally give a week for each one for each piece from now on um but that's all from me take care of yourselves make sure you're staying safe and staying indoors um where you can um but if you have got a garden get out because at the moment the sun is lovely um but that's all from me please um look after yourselves and i will talk to you in the next lesson bye